Hi, I'm Amanda Steinberg, and I did chapter 10, pages 424 through 436. The first part that this section talks about is species-specific defense reactions. In the Bowles and Riley experiment, the box uh, control stimulus elicited freezing, not the actual action of the shocking itself. Rats learned that the box was associated with the shock. Therefore, they froze through the association, not from the shock itself. Through Pavlonian learning, the rats realized that there's a safe spot and a danger spot. Fanslow, he said that the control, the controlled stimuluses associated with an electric shock elicit endorphins. Bolds and Fanslow said that the freezing mechanism functions, the freezing mechanism's function is to suppress recuperative behaviors. Recuperative behaviors are defined as behaviors elicited by tissue damage, like licking a wound, that function to promote healing. <clears throat> Natural predators evoke freezing in rodents. If the rat supports the freeze, he will stay, but if he supports flight, he will flee. That kind of has to do with the adrenaline in flight versus fright. Um, the second thing that this chapter talks about is cognitive factors and avoidance learning. Humans and animals experience similar bodily functions when it comes to avoidant behaviors. This is tested through animals, and it also is tested through humans. We can see that we do, um, we kind of tend to perform the same actions when it comes to avoiding behaviors. So a response that the controlled stimulus evokes depends on the support stimuli. For example, freezing, avoiding behavior, etc. The controlled stimulus's termination provides the feedback. Feedback stimuli might reinforce avoidance because they inhibit fear. Some avoidant behaviors reduce fears. Selman and Johnson determined that organisms learn that the avoidance response predicts no aversive, unconditional stimulus, leading an organism to avoid. Avoidance behavior can be very persistent if the organism isn't receiving the undesired consequence. So if you're going to avoid something and, and it is avoided, it's not associated with the undesired behavior, therefore the behavior can become very persistent. The third topic that this chapter talks about is something called learned helplessness. This is brought up in previous chapters, but it's touched upon here in chapter 10 as well. Summon and Mayer determined that and demonstrated that the uncontrollability of the initial shocks was what is so crucial in avoidance training. They performed a shock experiment with three groups of dogs to determine that. The uncontrollability of the initial shocks was what was the most crucial aspect of the avoidance training. So they gave the shocks and they watched to see how the dogs learned to escape the shocks or the avoidant behavior. So they defined immunization effect, which is exposure to an escapable shocks before exposure to inescapable shocks protected the animals from deficits. And they talked about the learned helplessness hypothesis, which is when exposed to an inescapable shock, the organism behaves as if they had acquired the belief that their actions and shock termination were independent. They also defined something called the learned helplessness effect, which is the finding that inescapable shock interferes with subsequent escape learning. They also defined something called learned irrelevance. This is when there is zero contingency between a controlled stimulus and an uncontrolled stimulus. It is harder to learn to associate the two events when they are later paired. And uncontrollable events can lead to a person lead a person to motivational, cognitive, and emotional deficits, which is originally seen in animals, but later it's developed in humans as well. Animals can learn about the relationships between behavior and outcome. The controllability of a bad event has a powerful influence on the stress it produces, which demonstrates the question, can learning about the controllability of a stressor rather than its uncontrollability, um, can learning about the controllability of a stressor rather than the uncontrollability be a more important factor?